The next tool that I want to show you is one of the selection tools. I left this at the end because a lot of people are afraid of it, they don't understand it, and the truth is it's really simple. But in the very beginning of this DVD, I mentioned there were four selection tools. We've already had the rectangular marquee, the lasso, and the magic wand tool. I've used those many times and now you understand how they work. The pen tool is the final selection tool and the reason that I use it is because it's very very precise. It's the most precise way to make a selection. Now sometimes you can get away with just using the magic wand tool. So for example if you have a blue sky and a white snowy landscape uh, at the bottom of the frame. It's so easy to grab just the blue sky because the contrast between the blue and the white is dramatic. But what do you do when you have a picture like this? This was a snowstorm in Zion National Park. This mountain here is called the Great White Throne. And it was a little bit misty. It was snowing and you've got a white sky against white snow. If you want to replace this sky, there is no way you can use the magic wand tool. The lasso tool, you could use it, but it would take you a long time and you're always having to make those, uh, worry about how unsteady your hand is and, and uh, it's, it's not as easy as one would want. So, the solution is to use the pen tool. And let me show you how it works. When you click on the pen tool, it gives you, you know, you're, you're working with just your regular cursor, and there's the pen tool icon. Um, I typically work at 300% because that gives me the ability to really see exactly what I'm doing. If you look here, look how close the sky is with the mountain. It's very, very close. Especially, well, right here, there's like, there's virtually no demarcation at all. I can see a slight one with my eyes, but uh, Photoshop would not be able to distinguish that, and that's why you just could not use the magic wand tool uh, on, on any tolerance. So here's what I do. The pen tool, when you click it, on your picture, it puts on a dot, and you go all along the edge of your subject, and you lay down a series of dots along, in this case, a demarcation between the sky and the mountain that's almost impossible to see, but you can see it ever so slightly. So I'm going all along the edge, and this will take a while. If your subject is simple, then it'll take a very short time. In fact, after I show you this picture, we're gonna go back to one where I told you there was a problem and I'm gonna fix it using the pen tool. And it'll take just a very, very short time. But in this case, because you've got trees, you've got rocks, and you wanna go around them to be absolutely precise because that way when you're done your picture will look completely believable. The last thing you want is somebody to look at your picture and say, oh, that, that's a fake sky. Now if you make a mistake, let's say you go out here and then you go out there and, the, and then you go out there, you get off course, it's very easy to correct it because what you do is you go back to your pen tool and if you click it, there's a bunch of other tools under here, and all you have to do is go pen minus. It says delete anchor point. You choose that, then you touch the points you want to delete like that, and they're gone. Then you go back to the, the pen tool, and you have to click the last point that you lay down. Just click it, and now you can continue. That's how you can fix mistakes. There is a way that you can 
use like a shortcut with the pen tool as you're going around curves and so on. But I don't use that because the whole point of using the pen tool is to be absolutely precise. So, when you have made the entire circuit, then you have created a path. So, I will work on this and you'll see in a minute what that path looks like. I have now completed or almost completed my path. You can see here that I've gone all around the tops of the mountains and then up to this corner, over to that corner and back down and let me show you where I'm about to close the circuit. Here is the beginning point, there's the end point. I click on my pen tool, put a point right there, a point right there. And now, let me blow this up so you can see it. When I touch the last point, the pen has a little circle attached to it. You can see the icon right there. That tells you that you're closing the circuit. And when you click that last point, all your dots disappear and all you have left is a line. Double click the hand so you can see the whole line there. This is not a selection yet, it's a path. And we can go to the paths palette right here. Right there it says work path. And what we want to do is convert this now to a selection. Now I can go down here and choose in this, see what I've done here in the paths, whoops, let me, let me go back. In the Paths palette, this little tiny icon in the upper right corner gives you a pull down menu and it says make selection. I'm going to choose a feather radius of one pixel. And now I have a selection. That was a lot of work. I don't want to do that again. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go select save selection. I don't give it a name because the computer just calls it alpha 1 or alpha 2. I go OK. And now I'm going to go File, Save. So I'm saving that selection with this picture so I never have to do that again. So if I go to Channels, there's my alpha layers. Well. I actually had that selection from before. I made it again for demonstration purposes. So alpha 1 is when I did it before. Alpha 2 is actually what I did just now. We now have a selection into which we can put a sky. So let me choose a sky. You actually saw this one before and it is right here. This is the same sky that I use to put above the Bryce Canyon rock formation. I'm going to go select all and then edit copy. Now this picture is in my clipboard. I go back to the tab showing my Zion shot and before I paste it in I'm going to feather the edge one pixel. Feather, one pixel. Gives me that realistic, slightly soft edge or demarcation line where it's going to join the mountain. So now I go edit, paste into, and we now have a sky there. So I'm going to click on the move tool and move this up a little bit, get some more definition in that sky. Now, to be honest, this doesn't look quite right yet because the mountain is so light, it's sort of a hazy day. I didn't have this kind of contrast. So, going into my Image Adjustments Levels dialog box, shortcut Commander Control L, I can lighten this. I'm going to lighten the midtones, not the highlights because I don't want to lose detail here. 
the middle slider is for the midtones. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit so it looks realistic. In a day like this, you'd have a very light sky, maybe even lighter than that. Okay, now I'll click OK. Now let me turn this off and on. There's the original, and there's the lightened gray clouds that I dropped in. Now, if you look at this, this looks a little bit lighter. That's a little bit darker. That might look better flipped because the light area of the sky might look better against this white mountain. Let's try. Edit. Transform is where you, where you uh, manipulate all your layers. So we want to go flip horizontal. What do you think? Let's see. I think that looks good just like that. Of course, if I wanted to lighten this demarcation line here, I could. I could very easily take the burn tool. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll take the dodge tool. Uh, burn darkens and dodge lightens. And I could, um, let's make that a little smaller with my bracket key. Exposure is 50%. Let's go 34%. And let's just lighten that slightly along that edge there. There. Now the demarcation line is close like it originally was, but we still have some nice definition in the sky. I think that looks much better. Look at this. Just a white sky. And now there's a very light gray cloudy sky. I think that's perfect. Uh, I'm going to leave this layer here because I might go back and tweak that, maybe make it a little lighter, maybe do, maybe put another sky in there. So I'm going to leave that layer and I'll just go File, Save As. We'll call this Zion. Desktop. I'm going to retain my alpha channels and layers and just go save. And now I have a picture that I think is vastly improved. I'm going to show you another application of the pen tool. Remember when we did the LAX sign, I said there was a little flaw right there. Because this is on a diagonal, in order for me to select this, I need the pen tool. The lasso tool I can't use because I can't draw a perfectly straight line here with freehand. I, I, I'm not that steady and nobody really is. Look how we can solve the problem using the pen tool. I click on the pen tool. Now I'm going to make a selection of this area right here. So I just click right there. Right there, and then I can just do this and close my circuit right there. Then I hit the Paths palette. This little icon here in the, in the upper right hand corner. I choose Make Selection, One Pixel Feather, and now I have a perfectly straight selection on a diagonal. In order to fix this, I'll just use the clone tool. So let's make this a little smaller. And we will establish my, po my point right here from where I will be taking the information. Well, let's go to 100% opacity. And we'll just clone that in. Now it's not giving me the exact same tone unless I'm really careful. So let's try the healing brush a little bit to give me a little blend. There, look at that. If I deselect, well, let me look at this closely. Okay, look, the reason why that, that edge is soft is because I did a one pixel feather. And it looks like I shouldn't have. It looks like I should have done no feather because this is really sharp. So 
I'll bring back my selection by going Command or Control Z and this is what I'm going to do. I talked about having a selection and then expanding it. You can also have a selection and contract it. So let's go to Select Modify. Remember here's where Expand was. We can contract it. I'm going to contract it one pixel. And I'm not going to feather it at all. So now, okay, right now I have this area selected. I think I want the background selected. I'm going to go select inverse. Let's see if that solves the problem. I'm going to hide the edges, view extras. See, this is a good example of where you have to do some trial and error sometimes to solve a problem. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen or what's going to solve this problem, but we'll get there. So, clone tool. I've got the background selected now, not the letter A or the, yeah, LAX, the letter A. Let's clone that. Well, not quite. So let's undo that. Let's see, what could we do here? What we might have to do, okay, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deselect. Remember, we're, 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 we've got this selection. I'm going to go select, deselect. Here's what I think I have to do. I'm going to take the lasso tool and I'm going to select this edge up here. Just freehand. Edit, copy, puts this in the clipboard. I'm going to go deselect, select, deselect. Now I'm going to move this up here and I'm going to go Edit, Paste. On the Move tool, I can now move this in place. So now I have the kind of edge I want. Now with the arrow keys, you can nudge this. Nudge it left, nudge it up. Actually, that's, that's aligned right there. Now we still have this color problem. So let's see how we can solve that. Um, first I'm going to go flatten and then I'm going to choose the clone tool and I'm going to take a sample right next to there and see if I can clone the darker gray into this lighter gray. Get right up to the edge there. There, look at that. I'll do the same thing on this side by cloning this blue over the darker blue, which we don't want. And now the problem is fixed. Let's maybe a little closer here with the gray. Okay, now remember we're at 300%. If we go back down, you'll never see any kind of a problem there. Now, I'm going to go File, Save, because I don't need to go Save As, because I don't really need to save the image with the flaw. I'll just go Save. Photoshop is a lot about problem solving. Once you know how these tools work, it's a matter of planning a strategy, of figuring out how to get what you want. And sometimes it looks like it's impossible to do, but in this case, you know, th that, that one pixel feather was a mistake and I had to fix it. And the way that I fixed it was just borrowing the edge 
that was perfect and cutting and pasting over the edge that was a little too soft. Um, I love Photoshop. It enables me to do almost anything I can imagine. And it's also fun being like a, a photographic strategist. You have to figure out how to get what you want. And when you finally do it, it's just really, really rewarding.